<laughs> Good morning. Good morning, guys. Who's ready for a trail running workout climb? Well, I'm going to give that to you. This is uh, Tuesday, September 1st. Now, let me wipe the aquaphor off my mouth so I don't look that gross. This is uh, take two. I don't know, dude. We'll see if this works. I hit record about 30 seconds ago and the thing's like, nah, not doing it. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, dude, guys, sorry about the hair. I so need a haircut. I think it's like hanging over my head. I can't even tell. And then, yeah, here we go. I've already done 13 laps. A little over a thousand feet elevation climb. We're back here. We're back at the water tower. So here we go. Ooh, 70 plus feet elevation gain each lap. We'll get a few in. We'll sprint at the end. Shockingly felt the best I felt running in a while. Probably because I ate a lot last night. I don't know. <laughs> About apparently I had 1.1 pounds of uh, apple uh, cranberry uh, coleslaw. <laughs> yeah, hey, it was good. Except they snuck in oranges and grapes. That's okay. I pulled those out. But anyway, so my first mile where I'm like I'm slow as hell. I did it like in 12:15 which is basically like scorching the earth for me. I was like, that's weird, I was quick. And then when I got up here, I did a mile in like 1655, which I haven't been under 17 in a long time. Now, of course, like I always said, the hardest part of my runs is when I initially start recording, <laughs> trying to sync up my breathing <laughs> with the climbing, so. You know, forgive me that. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm Hood Hill Hopper. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Ping! And what am I doing? Uh, hit the like button. I think I said that. Comment, feedback, share. Sharing is caring. Let's go. All right. So I know you guys are probably like, dude, this guy's been doing a lot of water tower runs. And I know I mentioned before, A, like, um, I get the best workout here. <laughs> I, it's safest. If you haven't noticed on my uh, Hyperlapse Monday video, it's pitch dark when I leave in the morning. It's hard to go on the trails that early. Yes, I can bring a light and I will at some point. But I get a better workout here. It's safer and it's a little less wear and tear on my legs. Um, Cause what is this? I think this is going to be video 83 in a row. So I'll just give you guys an idea um, what we're looking at. As long as I don't go this, down this hill too fast, I save my legs more. Let's see up top. I've been wearing these shoes for about two months. This is, this is my second pair. This is pair B I wear when I'm not going on trails. You see that? They're ripped, all shredded up, destroyed the bottom, you know? So, um, so we're doing that to the shoes. It, <laughs> the shoes ain't absorbing 100% of that. So that's going to my, my knees, my hips, my hamstrings, my back, everything. So trying to save a little, do more on the weekends, but the main, the honest main reason is I'm too busy with work and family, dude. I had been. I've been putting uh I've been putting my family on the back burner the first probably month and a half of YouTube and it's just like and I'm paying the consequences. I know the, the minutes, the subscribers, all that, but I mean I don't have a choice. I mean what comes first? Your freaking subscriber count or your family. So that's that. So I'm doing more of this. We're still getting it on on Sundays. Uh, Saturdays if we have a chance, but I've been, I've been working like, you know, full time on Saturdays, so I can't do the craziness as much. But Sundays are still a go, except I think this Sunday we're gonna switch it to Labor Day, because my work makes me take Labor Day off. So I think I'm gonna work Sunday instead. And it's gonna be a scorcher, sitting like 105 on Sunday. Good grief. So 
anyways but yeah that's that um don't know if you guys saw my my hyperlapse video monday yesterday number 82 i guess dude it was a fun run it was pitch dark we ended up going through the jungle and we went then we went over to the maze of waterworks which is all single track for mountain bikers and i was like you know what i'm gonna try and explore more of it because i just and i maybe did only 50 percent and dude we were on there for like it's a maze it's an incredible trail system i'll go as far to say i've never been on a cooler maze of trails whatever you want to call it i was trying to learn it all it's awesome you have real foresty areas it's beautiful there's some crazy steep hills which are meant for crazy downhill mountain bikers but we climbed up them the one the one i really like it's super steep it's 70 feet it's about the same elevation gain as this but it's probably at least twice as steep which means the distance way less so it's like a sprint and you're just trying not to lose your momentum as you get up there and i did three of those laps yesterday i don't know how well it shows up on the hyperlapse but we saw deer too it was it was it was a fun run and then sunday was with my daughters where i didn't i didn't take it easy but we did just over 12 miles kind of rolling hills just over seven feet 100 700 feet elevation gain so not much it wasn't a steep climb in fact we stayed on a bike path along the the new toll road they built and we did that out and back 12 miles it was a fun run it's still it took me two hours and almost 15 minutes so i mean it, it was solid it was like i burned over 1500 calories so it's a heck of a run but uh it's not it wasn't my epic august 9th sunday where i did over 14 miles with the kids and like over 1600 or 1800 i can't remember uh feet elevation gain and that run it took like three hours and 45 minutes so i was screwing around too i burned over 2700 calories probably by far the most the most epic run i've done in terms of calories burned you know pushing 150 pounds my kids um it wasn't the worst i felt the worst i felt was when i did the laguna beach run on a saturday and still it's still the only of these 83 it's the only one i've really been i bonked on like i just had nothing in the tank and i i know i said it like it was just like i'd been out a few miles no real climbing yet it was just this medium grade climb like less than this one definitely less than this nothing crazy and it was like and i just had nothing in the tank i was like dude this is weird it was hot i don't know i think i was overworked but uh, that day that day was tough and we were just getting started i ended up doing almost i think 13 miles and we did a we did a crazy near the end topped it off with this super steep over 700 feet single track elevation gain which you start at the base the valley the 133 highway and go straight up to the top of those hills which i guess is considered newport coast it was over 700 feet and i knew going down i'm in trouble i'm in serious serious trouble and uh basically yeah i was in red the heart rate monitor my heart was in red meaning it was it was working so hard the whole 15 minute climb up and that's that's unheard of for me i rarely get in the red no matter how tough it is so the bad news is it destroyed me what's funny i did a crazy run the next day sunday with my kids both of them and i felt good again it was like normal so because i was afraid oh man this is gonna last over and it didn't but uh 
Man, that run, I still have nightmares on that one. Felt awful. The good news is because my heart rate was through the roof the whole run, I burned a ton of calories. Like, I think almost 2,500 for like a regular run without the kids. It's insane. Like, it should normally probably been below 2,000, probably like 18 or 19, seriously. Like, so it just, I just burned. So that's, that's that. Um, ooh wee. Okay, hey, a quick, I don't know, Coach Kev, if you see this, um, you might be the only one that appreciates this really, but a quick uh, shout out, um, condolences, rest in peace, to uh, Coach John Thompson of Georgetown. I guess he passed away yesterday at 78 or 79. And um, I know a lot of you, especially the foreigners, are like, who is this guy? He was, he was a legendary coach at Georgetown University men's basketball. Uh, started, I believe, in the early 80s. Won a championship, I think in 84, with Ewing, I believe. Don't Patrick Ewing. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, and I was a huge fan because I was growing up as a kid. There wasn't, you know, back in the 80s, not a lot of channels. Um, but we did have ESPN. You know, it was pretty, it was one of the few. And they were playing, I remember especially Saturday mornings. You know, they were playing a ton. I was a young kid, like under 10 play a ton of college basketball and I just always remember seeing in my head Georgetown Georgetown like they're always playing probably because it was the morning I'm on the west coast so these are the east coast teams playing Georgetown's in Washington DC sorry um very prestigious school I wanted to go there <laughs> but um so anyways so I always saw them and I just like oh you know what that's gonna be my college team and then at that point I believe it was around 90, 91. They had a heck of a team. Coach John Thompson, they had a, a um, Dikembe Mutombo, who he brought in, I think, from somewhere in Africa. Just a seven foot, like two or seven three guy. Just awesome, awesome dude. He, that dude does charitable work. Like, <laughs> basically puts everyone else to shame. Let's put it that way. Um, and then, uh, and my favorite, favorite guy, Alonzo Morning, who is just amazing. And there was those two guys, they had a little short point guard, I can't remember his name, but they were great. They went, they didn't make it super far in the tournament, but I loved them. They either made like Sweet 16 or uh, um, or the Lead 8 in the NCAA tournament, March Madness. Hey, whatever happened to that? <laughs> um, anyways, so that was incredible. Then, in early man I want to say I want to say 90 I want to say 95 uh, was the year a freshman came in Allen Iverson which I know everyone's heard of him and he just you guys think he was good in the NBA he was out of this world in college he was just he was so much better and faster and worked harder on the court than anyone else. And uh, I know they're going to say, oh, he didn't practice. Dude, when that guy, when that guy laced up, that guy was, he never took a playoff. Anyways, that guy, so he just took college basketball by storm. It literally made me, I was a slow fat kid. I lost the weight, but I was still slow. Terrible hand-eye coordination. No speed, no quickness, no agility. It, because of him, I ended up, my dad remembers this, but back in the 90s, they got really popular for a bit with the kids. The strength shoes. Mine were called jump soles. It's basically where you put them on your shoes or the shoes built in, and it's basically the front of the shoe. It's like two or three inches lower, so you're always forced to stand on your tippy toes. And then you do a bunch of exercises with them. You do sprints, you do lateral work, jumping over cones, jumping rope, like everything. And you, you do it maybe for a half hour, like three times a week, something like that. And I was dead serious. I'm like, 
I'm like, I'm getting good at basketball and I'm, so I gotta do this. So three days a week, I do that. The rest of the days after school, I was a sophomore in high school. I'd, uh, just in my driveway, we had a, we had a hoop hooked onto the garage, the top of it. I just play by myself, practice dribbling, practice shooting, uh, an hour or two a day, literally. And just to, and I got sharp and like, obviously, pretend I was Allen Iverson, but I was sharp. And so I kind of mimicked his style, this is embarrassing, but we'd, so we'd go play pickup all the time, basketball all over the place. And dude, here's the thing. I, I was, I'm six foot and we would just, whoever I was with, we'd pretty much work over whoever we're playing against. Now, Grant, it's a small farm town surrounded by other small farm towns. So we weren't playing anyone legit. <laughs> there was no NBA recruits, no really even big time college recruits. But for that area, we kind of, for a couple years, we were destroying people, whoever I was with, in pickup games, you know, two on two, three on three, even four court, five on five. So that was like, that was great. That was like the peak of my athletic career. Um, the problem was I played high school then, but I was six foot tall. And obviously, like I said, I'm mimicking Allen Iverson. So I'd play point, pick up, I'm playing point nonstop. And just dribble, I could dribble like crazy doing stupid shots. So in high school, the coach like, oh, you're six foot. Remember, small farm town. Well, you're the tallest kid. We're putting you down in the box, buddy. And you're just gonna post up. I had zero post up game. Cause that's never what, I can never really get used to it. I did okay. I had crazy energy. So I could out rebound and out defense everyone. But I was never great at, at that. Um, but anyways, this is like way off topic. So Allen Iverson, they had that year. Oh man, it might've been, I'm not sure, maybe 97 or 90, I, where the Allen Iverson second year where it was him, they had the freshman number 44, Victor Page, playing the shooting guard, I believe. And they had, uh, at center, I believe they had Othella Harrington, who was really good. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you statisticians, I believe they went to the lead eight that year and lost to uh, a juggernaut UMass team. Uh, with, I think, was it Coach Calipari? I believe. And I want to say Marcus Camby. I could be wrong on that. But that's what I think. Anyways, anyways, that's my story. And Coach John Thompson, he kind of held everything together. Did a lot of like, a lot of good work. His son took over the program. I think in like the early 2000s after he retired. Um, but man, Coach John Thompson, he always had that towel, the white towel on his right shoulder and uh in fact the nba studio inside the nba guys you know ernie johnson barkley shaq uh kenny the jet um they all did it they did a tribute they all wore the the white towel the, the show last night that was awesome very cool very cool tribute so i know like man i know most of you do not watch that don't know who that even is but he was really really cool guy so that's a uh, sorry to see him pass um he had a great life anyways all right what are we talking about next <laughs> so um now what was i gonna talk about dang dude Whew. oh man we uh i started watching sunday Thor 3, Ragnarok, Ragnarok, can't even say it, with my daughter. I hadn't seen it in a while. I forgot how funny that movie is. Dude, if you guys haven't seen that, and you're in the comic books, go see that movie. It's great. It's got some great cameos. Um, it's just solid. We're not even done with it yet. I think we still have 45 minutes. But that's a great, great, uh, Great show. Um, whew. Yeah, there we go. Man. Yeah, so we're gonna, 
we're gonna try it. I'm hoping today I can sprint a little bit um, that last lap. My time's 39 seconds. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see if we can top that. We're gonna give it a shot. We still got all the way to go. But we're gonna, we're gonna make it happen. Oh dude, one quick shout out. One game, you know, my daughters might take them on Sunday. God bless them, but dude, the one, the six-year-old has her face glued in the Roblox, I guess is the name of the game, and her tablet, and the two-year-old is basically a mute, which is funny because, and she's like, she's like that to us, like, we'll be home, she doesn't want to talk, just shake her head, yes, no, it's like, dude, you're turning three in two months, but then, when she feels like it, like at night when they go to sleep, She's just yelling and screaming and laughing till like midnight. <laughs> it's like, dude, kid, what's your problem? But anyways, uh, that Roblox game, apparently I had a couple people say, yeah, their kids are hooked on that. And it's like, my six-year-old would play that game. I think it's like a better version of Minecraft. I'm not even sure. My six-year-old would play that game 12 hours a day, nonstop, and at night, if he gave it to her. So. <laughs> like geez dude I'm trying to get them off the tablets more but we'll we'll see about that man but yeah if you guys have kids <laughs> hey uh man i forget his last name but cholo talking about he's got a kid on the way congratulations and yes man you will it's a blast taking them running it's just it's good it's good family time dude and like I mentioned in my comment, <laughs> take them when they're young. Wait over six months. You gotta make sure they're still, they got some meat on them. But you take them when they're like one or whatever. Dude, they're still light. <laughs> so you're not breaking your back, pushing them around. But like I've always mentioned, if it's flat or a little downhill, you're, 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 you're okay. Jogging and running with a stroller. It's when the uphill. It just destroys you. But that's where you get the workout. That's where you get that. That's why I did it here with the kettlebells. You know, it's just phenomenal. So, whoa. There we go. Oh, dude, I know I won. I got check to see you. Comment back. Um, A cool girl on, I think she's from Britain. I better not mess this up. Um. On YouTube, uh, I think her name is Laura Fat the Fit. It's like her weight loss journey, and she's doing great, by the way. But she's got like technology galore, like every camera. So she's doing her video of her running. It's so much better than mine. It's like just all with a super wide angle. I think it's the 360 degree. She's using the Insta360, I think it's called. <laughs> So I posted, I'm like, how do you edit? I just don't know on PC for that matter. Like apparently it's much easier on an iPad or a Mac, iMac, whatever. Power PC, power, I don't know what they call them nowadays, power hook. Um, but uh, I don't know how to do it with a PC. So I, I asked her, but anyway, her videos look freaking phenomenal. And she's running about, it looks about eight times faster than me, so that's kind of embarrassing, but hey, good for you. But great scenery, and uh, yeah, seriously, if you hear this, how the heck do you, how do you get those great pictures? The video, it's just all. Now one thing, she's got a selfie stick, so she's probably holding that out. I'm not, I just, I got this little baby water stick. I have long arms though, so that's my selfie stick. I got the six feet tall, six foot four wingspan. Yes, that helped me in basketball. <laughs> it did since back on basketball again. So, but yeah, no, Laura at the Fit, check out her channel. She's got great personality, really funny, um, and uh, and good lord, her her like vlogging is great. She's basically doing what I'm doing, but better. You know, it just looks so good. Whoa! Let's switch arms here. So yeah, that was that was phenomenal on that. 
All right, let's get going. Hey, I didn't, I don't know if you guys saw, I just saw reviews for the new Bill, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I guess it's coming out streaming and maybe some theaters. I don't think in the US, I don't know. Looks good, 80%. I'll tell you what, I'm a huge Keanu Reeves fan from John Wick. And uh, yeah, that's, dude, John Wick's so good. And I'm not even into violent movies. Just not my style at all. The blood and everything. <laughs> Yet that movie is just, oh, it's so good. So I never, I've never still to this day, I've never seen the original Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I think there's bogus journey. I've never seen either of them. I don't even really know what it's about. I think it's about time traveling maybe. But they just came out with a new one like 30 years later. I don't know. So that looks, that looks like a lot of fun. So it got good, good user reviews, which I talked about on Rotten Tomatoes. So that is definitely, definitely something I'm about to check out. Ooh, yeah. All right, I think we're ready. Who's ready to sprint? <coughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, so we're just gonna. 39 seconds. What do you guys think? I don't know. My goal now at some point is to get to 35. That'd be awesome. It's all up to my legs though. Switch hands. Forty-eight. 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 We gotta get down low. Power those legs. Nope, I don't have it today. It's just not happening. Let's go. Let's go. Come on though. Let's give it our best. Let's go. Let's go. Twenty-six, twenty-six, twenty-eight. Hey, thirty-eight, thirty-eight seconds. <sighs> Holy crap! I was so, I was the most gas I've been in a while since Laguna Beach. <laughs> All right, guys, we have, woo! All right, here we go. Another run. Look at that, guys. 38 seconds, beat my record, I'm a little hill hopper. If you like this video, like I do, if you like my boring stories, subscribe, hit that notification bell, ping! Give me feedback, comment, sharing is caring. Share this video, hit the like button. Let's do this tomorrow. Tomorrow, baby. Ow! Woo, work time.